Welcome to Insights and Sound, where we talk to the people behind the scenes, behind the technology, and behind the music. People you may not know, but you should. My guest is Jill Courtney. She is a multidisciplined um, audio engineer, studio manager, instructor, educator, and um, chief cook and bottle washer, and probably a whole bunch of other things as well. And that's part of what we're going to talk about is yes, your sir. multiple, um, your, your, your semi, no, let me rephrase that. Your very diverse background. Yes, sir. Oh, I have a cat that's joining us. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. Okay. Well, we allow them. That's okay. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. He needed some attention, I guess. Yeah. Oh, no. Mine, mine is camera shy, but that's okay. <laughs> Mine's here for pretty much everything. So Awesome. All right. Um, well. Yeah. I, I mean, so we are in we're in touch because of audio so i guess we can start there we can but i actually i want to i want to start a little further back than that i just want to know sure. a little bit about your background because i know that you um you are a trained musician mm -hmm. as well as a technology freak and so there's you know there's my favorite topic there of the whole left brain right brain thing and how that all works together Yes. Um, so let's start with the, really the basic thing first. What came first, the music or the tech? Um, good question. I think music. I started, um, you know, with music when I was very young. Um, I think my parents recognized that I had aptitude in the area and I could match pitch. And so um, I was a touring musician when I was a kid, actually. Um, I was in this children's choir and we toured all around the nation and um, performed for, you know, high end famous diplomats and celebrities. And so I kind of grew up uh, playing piano and also singing um, all around the nation. And then, yeah, when I aged out of that, uh, I was left in, I was guess, middle school and I was in, um, choirs and bands and and so right around that point I started at the beginning of high school I started a rock band um, with a couple of guy friends of mine and so that kind of started some of the tech stuff but you know we still laugh about it because we were I was I mean I was singing through a bass amp along with the bass playing awesome like, of course you were like were you practicing in a garage well, it was a basement, but basically, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's got to be either a garage or a basement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. that's where it began. And I think um, I was always really interested. Actually, my whole like kind of tech thing spawned from having one of those dual cassette karaoke machines. <laughs> and that's how I started recording myself. I started mm -hmm. recording myself like, you know, at one, one would... I started thinking, well, you know, I have this cassette that has all the backing tracks on it. And then I had this really, really crappy mic that came with the karaoke. You know, it had an eighth or a quarter inch, uh, you know, plug. Of course. And it was hardwired. Yeah. Yeah. Molded like plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Made plastic, like full yeah. on plastic. Yep. And so I started recording with that. And I think I took that to college with me and I started layering tracks and like harmonizing with myself and creating basically like recordings that way and you know of course there's no way to un unbake the cake at that point because if you rotate enough cassettes you can have enough things painted on top of it right oh yeah plus tons of hiss yeah yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep. sure mm -hmm. yeah. um so that was kind of my first uh, foray in that and then also I at high school I was really interested in um, recording as well and so and my first recordings were as a singer way back when I was a kid with that choir and so um, I really was into it I went to a music tech camp and I almost majored in music tech and that was 93 so we're talking you know the very beginning of performer the, dark the very ages. beginning of mm-hmm mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. The beginning of digital. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I was there for that. And I was interested in that. I went into summer camps for it. I almost, I almost majored in it. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I got a huge scholarship for um, singing to St. Olaf College in Minnesota. And I went there for music education. And so I was there for four years. And then I got the heck out of Minnesota because it was freezing. <laughs> and I probably went to New York City. And that's where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm home. I'm home. And um, I grew up there. So I understand. In Minnesota? No, in New York. Oh, in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it took me three days to adjust to the city. And then I was like, everyone else wears black too. Like, <laughs> and I fit in because everybody fits in there, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, exactly. It was like my first experience with that. And, mm -hmm. and I also would, I stood out so much um, in my former environments that it was so refreshing to not stand out at all. And in fact, I learned in New York City, if you do stand out, it's almost a liability, especially for a female. So oh, yeah. I learned how to, you know, just kind of fly under the radar as much as possible, just kind of getting to and fro. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I recorded all through my high school and college years as a singer in a band. And, and I knew just enough to be curious and dangerous. I took the one offering in college at St. Olaf College. I took the one music tech offering that we had at the school. Uh, uh -huh. And then, yeah, I, I think I just got fed up. Uh, at some point in New York, I was working with, I was collaborating with people who, um, who I found frustrating in that I wanted to be able to have a little bit more control over the end result of the music. And so I just kind of like applied to NYU's program for a master's and, and I got in and I was like, oh, okay. You know, now it was, I had been, and at that point I had been in musical theater out there. I had another degree in musical theater that happened in New York city at AMDA. Mm -hmm. And then I, yeah, I, so I learned how to teach it and write it at St. Olaf and then perform it uh, at this musical theater school and then record it. So, I mean, it sounds to me like the creative path and the technical path just sort of proceeded in parallel all along, huh? A lot, a lot of it, yes. And you know, sometimes I had would I would have to catch up, but I've always very, very fascinated. I grew up with computers in my basement. I mean, uh -huh. along with the band. So you know, my my father was he's he was a he is a technical computer guy. And so he really got into when computers first, you know, started becoming household items. Uh -huh. Even before then, he was repairing PCs. So I had like, you know, 10 or 12 PCs in various states of repair around the same basement where we would have band rehearsals. So, I mean, I kind of grew up on the computer. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't shocking to me at all, like it was to a lot of my peers. So... So you were able to make that transition also from analog to digital pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 Although I never really, I never really, I mean, as an engineer, I learned digital, like digital was yeah. already kind of there. So I never really learned fully how to do analog recording until I had to teach it. <laughs> so you've never like spliced tape or anything? Ooh. Nope. Now nope. there's trial by fire. Yeah. Well, and I had to teach it then. And so uh -huh. I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. I really got to learn this so I can actually teach it to these kids. So, well, and I think, level. you know, to a certain extent, it's that's a different perspective than like, you know, myself. I, I learned on analog. Mm -hmm. And, but again, I was a computer geek too. And so um, I was involved with one of the early MIDI companies, you know, nice. doing MIDI sequencers. And so the transition from that, because I was already producing records to then digital audio workstations when they came out, you know, um, I was, well, I had a studio in, in Hamburg, Germany, and we were approached by some of the guys at Steinberg saying, we're starting this new thing called VST, uh, virtual studio technology, and would you yeah. be a beta site? So, um, you know, for me, it was an adjustment the other way, so to speak, but I think it's, um, the challenge there I have seen with a lot of people who learned on digital 
was understanding signal flow. Because mm -hmm. that is something that I think is a lot more intuitive in the analog realm. Because, you know, you start here, you go there, you go across, you know, that kind of thing. And that is probably, at least from what I've seen with younger students who are learning with digital, it's a little harder to teach that concept in a digital mm -hmm. world. Because you have so many different paths that are not really, quote unquote, organic. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, really, if you learn like how you did, you know, you have to conceptualize of it and you have the trial by fire. Yeah. That like, yeah. oh, something's wrong. I've got a troubleshoot. Right. And until you really work with that hands on. And for me, I never really aimed to be a recording engineer. Uh -huh. Like I really wanted audio to be able to record my own music. I mean, it was really like self-serving you know uh, for lack of a better no, term no, like that that makes perfect sense because at that point the technology becomes another instrument and that's and you know it was it, yeah it's interesting because i was just talking to someone the other day and she said to me that she had grown up around music but as soon as she discovered that you could record music and then that was a thing she was much more interested in that than she was in necessarily being a musician because you know, it's true that the, the younger generation is aware of the fact that you can't really make money as a musician very easily. Whereas, you know, in, in, in my day, um, you know, back when we were growing up, everybody's fantasy was I'm going to become a rich rock and roller. Yeah. You know, and well, and there was money in both that and audio yeah. really yes. growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Things like now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> yep. Well, and, and, but, you know, that's interesting too, because you, you start out with one discipline, you mix in the other, and then as with most people, a lot of other stuff comes into play. You know, that's one of the things that I have found kind of fascinating. Um, I was speaking with someone about this earlier today. There's a great quote that I saw from, from Kurt Vonnegut talking about when he was a kid how uh, he's going to this camp and one of the counselors asks him what he does. Do you play sports? And he says, no, you know, I'm in choir and I'm in band and I do this and I do that. And the, the person says to him, oh, that's fascinating. He says, no, I'm not really good at any of them. And the person's response was, it doesn't matter if you're good at them. It matters that you're doing all of these different things because that diversity is what makes us who we are. Mm-hmm fascinating yeah yeah and that I seems like to that be, yeah and that seems to be a lot of people's paths in this industry you know i um i'm fond of the term autodidact you know because mm -hmm. it really is the story of my life you know i've pretty much just kind of watched things and figured out how they're done and then adopted them for myself and you know what i taught myself to play music that way i taught myself to be a recording engineer that way and you know how to do video and how to run a PR company and everything else that I've done, you know? And I think most of the people that I speak to in our industry, yourself included, you know, it's the same thing. You've, you've got so many diverse interests and we kind of let them all sort of come in and, you know, put them all in the same pot and let them, let them all melt together and see what happens, you know? Sure. And I think, I mean, for me, it wasn't even, I'm, I'm naturally curious. I'm a lifelong learner. I'm working mm -hmm. on my fifth degree, you know, right now. Um, no telling if it's the last one. I'm guessing that it is being as though it's a doctoral, but like, we'll see. We'll see. Well, you can always, you can always be a multi-doctor who knows, right? Yeah. It, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that my budget won't really uh, like accommodate that, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> there is a limit to loans, like I just figured out, which is like, what? Um, but yeah, I think for me, like the, the multi, it, it's a survival instinct. I'm a very self-made person. I did not come from money, mm -hmm. did not come from, um, family assistance. Same so, here. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, it's part of the hustle is what it is. I mean, yes. And, and it, you know, when you, I think when you acquire another, another skill set, it, it's just another tool in your tool belt. And for me, 
you know, I wanted to, I very much like the quote you just said, you know, there's no, I'm, I'm a master of none. <laughs> You know, I try to be a master as much as I um, have patience for, but um, I do like to be the Jill of all trades, if you will, because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. to me, it, it allows me to survive. It allows me to pay my bills. Well, you um, know, what's interesting. I um, One of the first things I did professionally, quote unquote, was I was a bass player. I was a musician for hire. And to this day, I constantly run into people who are way better bass players than me, but I'm a good enough bass player to hold my own. Mm -hmm. You know, I run into plenty of people who are way better audio engineers than I am, but yet, you know, I'm not afraid to sit, sit down in front of an SSL and run a session, you know? Right. And I think that really applies to a lot of what we do. Um, I I always used to kind of beat myself up for not having the focus to sit down and play my scales more or whatever it is, you know, to, to become right. a master of this one thing. And yet I think that that diversity, you know, that's what makes us individuals in that sense. 100%. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do think it's, sir, I, I respect so much people who are, have mastered any of the things that I've taken on you know and i've been in, in a fortunate position to learn from some amazing incredible people and and learn from said masters but mm -hmm. you know i you really do have to keep your focus on a specific area if you want to master something and i've never been someone who has that self-discipline i think maybe or maybe i'm just really idly curious about a whole lot of things and so it, you know my curiosity has added you know video right uh, to the mix and it was by necessity it was literally yeah yep. i took a web class and they're like upload your video i'm like uh, this is while i'm in my nyu audio and i'm like i thought well great i'll take this web class that'll help me to promote my audio stuff it's another tool and they were like, here's how you upload your video. I'm like, what video? Oh no, I have to go learn how to do video. And so mm -hmm. I had to really quickly like go and, and learn, you know, Final Cut Pro and on the fly, like right behind me on the screen over there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, um, I sometimes refer to myself as a lead actor in short attention span theater, you know, because that's <laughs> really kind of what it is. You know, I'm, I become fascinated about something. I learn enough of it to accomplish whatever I wanted to accomplish with it. And then, you know, squirrel, you know, there's something else. You might have ADHD. I, well, I absolutely do. And, you know, I'm undiagnosed, but I, when I look at the symptoms. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And, and I actually, I'm, I firmly believe that most, if not all artists are in some sense, on the spectrum. We are probably high functioning on the spectrum, but, and, and, you know, I have, I have certain reservations about referring to myself as ADHD because I feel that a lot of people use it as a crutch. You know, mm -hmm. I have ADHD, therefore I can't do this or that, you know? Um, and, you know, so I, I have certain misgivings about classifying it like that, but honestly, you know, uh, before they called it ADHD, they just called it short attention span, you know, and that I believe is probably a big part of being a creative individual. You know, I mean, if you think about, I was telling somebody earlier, you know, one of my, one of the, uh, artists that I was always fascinated with was Leonardo da Vinci mm -hmm. because da Vinci was not just a painter or right. a sculptor. He, you know, he created weapons. He, you know, he, he designed, I mean, air aircraft and, you know, um, I mean, I went to an exhibit of some of his stuff and, you know, he, he created a gunboat for God's sake, you know, I mean, weird, weird stuff, you know, and you're talking centuries ago, but point That's being, a creative. That he was, yeah. Point being that he was just, you know, there's another thing I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to me, I think one of the fascinating things about that is that 
when I talk to students, and I'm sure that you experience this too, you talk to a student and they're usually, you know, late teens, early 20s. And we have this idea at that point in our lives that this is what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to be a producer or a rock star or whatever it is. And you are laser focused on this one thing to the exclusion of almost everything else. And then, you know, we make plans and the universe laughs. You start realizing that there's all these other things that start happening to you. Sure. And, you know, I, I call it allowing the path to illuminate as you walk on it, you know, but mm -hmm. essentially that's what it is. You know, you're, you're figuring out what you want to do and who you want to be. And, you know, 10, 15 years later, you realize that, oh yeah, you know, that thing that I was focused on, it's way over here. And I'm like, you know, headed in that right. direction because there are all these other diverse aspects of life and of creativity that, that call to us. Mm -hmm. And if you answer those calls, I think what you end up with is, yeah, you're, you know, you're not where you thought you'd be, but you're a lot well, you're a lot more well-rounded than you would have expected to be. Totally. Totally. I, I tell my students and I actually, um, the last couple of years I've been teaching business like uh, CTE mm -hmm. on a high school level at my day job. Right. And so um, part of that is self-discovery and finding out, you know, which pathway to take and which, how to kind of have short-term and long-term goals around those. But I also impress upon my students that you might find a pathway that you really like at the high school, and then you might go completely in a different direction for college and a completely different direction for a master's. And, and you know, it might be in the same wheelhouse or it might not, might not be, and that's okay because, you know, I, I just, I, I'm kind of railing against the linear thought of a career. I just can't, I can't, I, I, I've had such a zigzag career that, you know, I'll go over here and teach for a while and I'll go over there and record for a while and I'll go over there and design for a while. And to me, it's all one, but if you try to trace it into a line, it doesn't make sense for a lot of people who are very linear in thought and so therefore, you know, a lot of people will look at my resume and go, oh my God, it's all over the map. It's not all over the map. It's within an umbrella of creativity and production and education, you know? And so for me, it's, it's just not as straightforward as I'm going to be this. I'm going to go to this school and take this program and, and then I'll forever be that. I, I mean, I've used I have respect for people degrees. who can do that. What's yeah, that? I have a, I have total respect for people who can do that. Me too. You know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, and people have had full careers and get a gold watch at the end. I mean, this stuff exists. It does. It does. I, I can't fathom it in my orbit at all, but I, you know, and I, th I've always felt this real pressure, um, from the exterior that I tend to ignore <laughs> that, um, you know, kind of has tried to put me in a box, trying to put me in um, that linear career path of climbing the ladder. And for me, I've made a lot of lateral moves or moves that have positioned me better um, based upon one tool or the other, whichever I may be able to utilize at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think to a certain extent, all of those lateral moves you bring all the other stuff with you, yep. you know? Um, so, you know, it's the same thing like, um, you know, you talk to certain engineers, they're not musical at all. You know, they don't have a musical background. That's surprising to me. It is surprising, is always to, surprising. to Yeah. And yet there are many of them who can still relate to the artist mm -hmm. in a certain way, you know? And I think that's brilliant. I think it's wonderful that people can do that. But it's fascinating to me that somebody can be along that path and be able to do that. You know, I mean, I'm, I remember being surprised years and years ago, uh, before he was a name, um, I was doing some songwriting with a woman who, whose roommate was Keanu Reeves. Oh, wow. 
And, you know, but at the time it was like Keanu who, you know, I mean, he literally had not done anything except maybe a couple of, you know, lightweight B movies or something. And I was over at her apartment and we were working on a tune and I said, Oh, you know, can I, can I use that bass to, she said, yeah, use Keanu's bass. I'm like Keanu, who was my roommate, you know? And I remember being very surprised when I found out years later that, Oh yeah. So you're an actor. You're also a musician. And yeah, you know what? There are a whole lot of actors who are musicians yep. and you know, some of them really, really good musicians. You know, I was, I was amazed to find out what a great musician uh, the comedian Steve Martin is, for oh, example. Oh, for you know? sure. Love yeah. him. But he is so it, good. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, point being that there are, that all of these people who are talented, they're not just one dimensional talented. And you bring all of these different skills to everything you do. Mm -hmm. You know, the same way I think um, I did a session once with, a singer who was who had been an actress long before she was a singer and she was on a tv sitcom and stuff like that you know and and um it was interesting to me because we were working on a vocal and i was able to approach her vocal performance from a perspective of what's your motivation you know and that's an acting thing yep but it was so cool because I could see that, yes, you're bringing all of your different diverse talents to this project. And I think to me, that's, it's fascinating that we can, that we can actually channel all those things into whatever we're doing now. So, you know, I'm, I'm all Absolutely. about the diversity thing. Definitely. I am too. And I think, but I also think, you know, there's, I think it is like, uh, it's like a, a jewel, you know, there's multifaceted. Yes. Um, it makes it shine and, 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 but it's only really valuable depending on where it lands. And so, you know, not everybody sees the value of that diversity. You know, some people want a very specific specialist who is master of it. And that's great. I mean, sure. can't, can't knock that, but like, you're right. I, it is, I, I find value in, I find survival in the facets. Yeah, survival, I think that's a big part of it because for a lot of us, we really can't survive by doing just one thing. We just, you know, I, I go batshit crazy if I just have yes. to do one thing for too long. Sure, you know? sure. And I mean, I can tell that with your career, you've gone through a whole lot of different things and you, you seem to do a whole lot of things at the same time too. I've never think? really had one job I, since high school. Yeah, maybe high school. Um, and I was, you know, going to high school at the time. So I guess that's kind of a job. But no, I've really, um, I've never had just one job. I'm, uh, it's foreign to me. Um, and I think that that's, I mean, it really came down to survival too. It's never, I've been in that mode for a very, very long time. And so, you know, you have, if I have a night free, uh, I'm going to either teach with it, or I'm going to produce something with it, or, you know, take on something part-time if I have that, or, you know, with the most insanity is what's been going on lately and that I'm in doctoral school full-time or, you know, and also working two jobs like that's insane um yeah, yeah, but yeah. there are certain things that give like I, for instance i'm not in a relationship right now so that that is why i can do it i've chosen mm -hmm. that that part is going to be on hold right now while sure. i you know while i'm in school because i can't there's not a sliver of my time that where i can incorporate someone's needs wants and desires into my <laughs> like it's all about me and the cats so hey <laughs> Whatever works, you know. But there's give and take, you know, and sure. I and it's sure. not forever. But mm -hmm. um, those are things that have suffered. Uh, you know, there isn't that element. It's not a well-rounded life. Um, there's but not for you balance. right now. It is right now. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm on. I just finished a class, so I have this little window of beautiful bliss where I don't have homework. But. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you, you, you manage it, you know, and, and yeah. I think that yeah. these are all choices too. And you can, anyone can make those choices or not make those choices. And it just has been working for me thus far. So tell me about, um, 
you know, I was looking through your resume a little bit and some of the stuff that you've done. And one thing that I think is interesting is that you kind of fell into creating an, an AV production company. Yeah. Yeah. And you weren't a video person. I was the video person out of the two of us. Right. Well, but what I'm saying yeah. is you mm -hmm. initially, you started this conversation by saying you weren't a video person. I and wasn't. then all of a sudden you're running an AV production company. So yeah. that's a perfect example. Take me down the path of how that evolved. Yes. Well, I've always been fascinated with photography. So I've always been visually like inclined, but um, I think I, you know, my, my um, ex partner and I started this company really during NYU. So the, it really started with recitals that were off site so huge cathedrals in, in new york city like and they had nobody to go in and record and so or or alternatively they'd have a student worker who would put a mic in the middle and press record on some device and that's what you get what you get and so my ex and i were like well we could do something that's at least stereo like we could do something a little bit better and then um i got some equipment and I didn't really know what I was doing with it, but I, you know, I mean, some of those early gigs, we didn't charge a lot because we didn't know, you know, how it all was going to go. But, yeah. you know, we'd throw, um, I was, I was studying audio for video. That was actually my, my focus in, um, graduate school at NYU. Uh -huh. And so I kind of necessitated having video in order to do audio for video. And so, um, while I fell in love with doing audio for animation, um, it also was kind of cool to be able to say, okay, I'm going to go get some video footage and then I'm going to put music to this or I'm going to put sound to this and sound effects and voiceovers or whatever. And I just loved that creative flow. And so um, that that's kind of where it came from. And then when the, you know, the company would make a certain amount of money and we're like, yeah, I mean, you probably need another mic. <laughs> and we go get another mic and then we go get another camera and then we go get, you know, it just kind of evolved. And then, uh, by the time both he and I graduated from NYU, we were looking at moving because, you know, our, our recording space in New York city was either a bedroom or a living room or kitchen. You know what I mean? You like, had both. <laughs> it was a one bedroom apartment. Ooh. I know it was super luxury. I know. Yeah. But all was awkward. There was no soundproofing. It was in Brooklyn. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it yep. is just, it's, you could do things with it. I did my first album there, but uh, in between it's not the jackhammers outside the window and stuff, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, you have to dodge, you know, you're always sound dodging for sure. Yes. But yes. exactly. So I got really good at that. But, but yeah, you, it's not ideal. It's not ideal to see a client in that sec setting. And so yes. we, we ended up in Nashville. We saw that. We could sell out of Brooklyn and, and have three times the space with at half the price at the time. This is like 2005. And, yeah. and, and three times the humidity too. Oh, well, New York's humid too. Yeah. It's, I mean, the yeah. devil's waiting room and the subway, that's kind of hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I live out West now, you know. God bless you. <laughs> I'm moving West too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's get, true. Yes, you are. Um, I am. Yeah. So it, that's, and, that's kind of how it evolved. And then like, you know, we just kind of launched it in Nashville and nobody else was doing AV production that we saw that we kind of like filled this niche where we'd be on site, like at any place. So like they'd call us to churches and, or we'd go to do recitals or we'd go to, you know, events outside or, you know, it, it just was like kind of anything. And, and so we would accept these gigs that a larger company probably couldn't afford to with their staffing. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I got into like running three, four cameras at once, like in different locations by my, you know, I learned on the job a lot of times and, or I would learn bef right before the job mo most likely, because I really am not a fan of being a guinea pig with a client. Um, at yes. all. So yes, it's just, it's too risky. I'm not a big, like, I, I like calculated risks, but not like that. So Mm -hmm. but so that's kind of how yeah but it's but it's interesting that you say that because that still points to the same thing of 
I'm curious about something. I'm going to try it. And then I'm going to include it in my skill set. You mm-hmm. know, and as I get better at it, I'm going to include it in my skill set. And at the same time, I probably will not become a master at that one thing because nope. my goal is to accomplish, you know, whatever it is, that goal. That's what I'm learning this particular skill for so that I can do this thing with it. And then, yes. you know, I'm by the time I get to the point where I've figured that out, I'm on to the next thing. And I think that that diversity right there is obviously what's run your career. I think so. I think it's just a constant evolution is what it's it is. curiosity. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's curiosity. Just always being inquisitive enough to say, you know what? That looks like fun. Yeah. I bet I could do that. We're not. And let's yeah. try. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you but know, it's, it's always, it's always worth the story. If you like fail colossally, like to me that there's material in that there's comedy material in that too. Oh, so. absolutely. Absolutely. And that's usually some of the best stuff, but it's funny. Cause I remember years and years ago having a a conversation with a friend of mine who I had been in several bands with and collaborated with over the years. And I made some joke about faking it. And he just, he looked at me dead serious. And he said, you have made your career out of doing exactly what you do and don't look at it as faking it. It's not faking it. What it is, is figuring it out and then doing it. Yep. And it's really true. I've always been a a believer. If you put things out there, eventually something will hook. Right. Yeah. And, and it's the same way. It's like, you know, you're just trying something new. And, and for me, it's always been in the same orbit. It's not like two universe, you know, I'm not like all of a sudden we're going to be a physicist. You know what I mean? Like this isn't way the heck out there for me. Like it might be, it may be, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that'll be fascinating 10 years from now. I really don't know. But you know, if you think about it, there are some people who are musicians who then, you know, because they have a background in physics, let's say you become studio designers or whatever it is. You know? sure. 100%. Sure. And it's, it's that, that merge, like that merging of, of all of those skills that makes someone, um, you know, truly a specialist in certain areas too. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. It isn't faking it. Faking it would be me going in and having zero experience with audio or video and buying a camera and then just charging somebody to make a music video when I've never even turned on the camera. You know what I mean? I think there's some, you do have some skill sets that we, I mean, both of us, we bring to the table to begin with. Sure, Sorry. sure. And and I mean, I, I have to laugh, you know, when you say that, because there have definitely been cases, and I've seen a few things just recently on social media about people claiming skills that they don't have, and, you know, more or less offering their services to people who should know better, you know, than to claim something like that. I, I think it is, it is obviously incumbent upon one to learn at least a little bit without learning it on the client at the same time you know i'm i mean i remember the first time somebody called me and said they were looking for a record producer and i honestly didn't think of myself as a record producer but you know or as a producer shall we say right right but a a friend of mine who was a music publisher had said to me you know you know, I had pitched a song to him as a, as a publisher. And he said, well, you know, who does your production? Oh, uh, I guess I do, you know? And then yep. that you started to dawn on me. Yeah. It started to dawn on me that, oh, well, you know, and, and a couple of weeks later, I got a call from an artist who said, you know, we're looking for a producer. And I said, well, look, I don't have a whole lot of experience, but you know, I'm happy to sit with you guys and give my input. And Sure enough, it's it started to come to light after a few of these kind of sessions that, yeah, you know what? People kind of like my ideas and I've got some good musical ideas as well because I was into arrangement sure. and understanding of what the song should be and stuff like that. And yeah, you kind of fall into the ability that you have and how you do something and you refine it. And yep. that is the process, isn't it? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for, for a lot of us, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think what I, what I really like here is the fact that not just that you have this attitude and this, you know, I'll try anything kind of mindset, but that you're an educator, because to me, one of the questions I ask a lot of people is what would you tell the new, you know, the upcoming generation and clearly what you're telling them is exactly that, you know, follow your path wherever the hell it leads, no matter how convoluted it is. Right. Yes. Yes. And I didn't, I mean, really when I, or when I even enrolled at NYU's program, I didn't know anything about audio for video. I didn't know anything about that. I had just been a studio singer, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. who really wanted to like learn more and had an aptitude, but like, I had no idea that that's kind of how it would pan out and that I would love it so much. And, you know, sometimes you have this picture, but you can't be married to the picture. Yeah. You know, you have to say, okay, this is what I think. This is kind of like my gut is telling me I'm going to go in this direction. But, you know, there's, there's so many different vast opportunities in that direction. The newest thing that I'm into now is instructional design because it uses all of those. Uh -huh. And so I, that's what I'm, my new job is going to be in, in Colorado. Um, I just got hired by this company and um, I'm going to be designing a really cool, you know, coursework online and it, it uses all of it it uses audio and video and um education and curriculum design and leadership and all the things that i've studied i mean it's all in a blender and there um, is a career for that and you know yeah to me that's that's i'm really excited about that and i'm excited for the challenge but I'm a lifelong learner and that's, it. I think that's what it, it is. And it, I also love parlaying any of that experience to me. That's my legacy. I've also never had children. And so for me, my babies are my are the world, you know, everybody who I educate, um, they're, they're my babies and, you know, no matter what age they are. So that's pretty awesome. Me, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's pretty awesome. And I think it's, you know, it's interesting to me that you have the courage to take that on no matter where it leads. You oh, know, for and, sure. And, uh, you know, also, you know, I always think about like previous generations, you know, because the world was a lot different when, you know, my parents were growing up, for example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my parents used to always uh, lecture us about getting a real job and having the skill to fall back on and all of that. And I think, you know, we call it the gig economy, whatever you want to call it. The point is that now I think people coming out of college, the essential thing is not to learn a thing. It's to learn everything. It's to learn as many different things as you can. Number one, because you're, you're bellying up to the buffet of life and, you know, there are so many experiences to be had, but also because by learning so many different things, you can be open to really whatever opportunities come your way. Just like, I mean, you're just now taking an opportunity to, you know, what is it, Space Force or something like that that you're going to work for? You know, I mean, I find that highly amusing. You know, I want to, I want to see hilarious. the uniform. It's I need hilarious. to see the uniform. Okay. Seriously, you know, um, <laughs> But, but, you know, this is, this is, I think, something that you have prepared yourself for by doing all of these other different things, as you say. And I think that is, to my mind, probably one of the most valuable skills one can have in this day and age. Well, not just in this day and age. I think actually it's, it's valuable anytime, but I think it's particularly valuable now to be able to really be multidisciplined. I think, I think it is too, I, but I think it also, you really, I think there's one ingredient that you really have to have in order to do all of those things. And it's taking your ego out of the work. You can't have an ego. You can't be invested in how you're perceived or your 
abilities or your, you know, self concept, you have to take all of that out of the mix, if you will, in order to try something new and, and feel like a jackass all the time <laughs> at something. And I love that. I love that because it's, it's my favorite. It means that I'm learning something and I don't judge myself for that. I don't judge myself for being, um, uh, a starter in something. I just don't. And I, I don't judge my students for that either. When they make mistakes in my classroom, I'm like, good. What did we learn? Now, what, now let's, what will we do differently next time? That's what it's all about. It's about providing yourself a safety zone where you can kind of flow in one direction. And I think also you have to be able to be open-minded to new opportunities and to new locations. I mean, this is my eighth state that I've lived in. I've literally moved. This will be my 31st move. So thank you. I because mean, my kids give me a hard time all the time about how often I've moved in my life, you know, and it's, and it's probably even more times than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's dysfunctional. I get that, but like it, if it works and look here, it, it's, it's dysfunctional to people who are very traditional minded and, and it's like good that's... dysfunctional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. And I totally get it. And, you know, to me, I think it's, I, I think it's part of being diverse. I really do. I think it's part of being able to say, you know what, I'm going to try something different, you know, and always being willing to try something different. So yep. good on you for that. Absolutely. I have way too many books for this though way too many <laughs> and books to be moving like this. Like at some point I have to figure it out, but yeah, I, the, it's just, it, they're coming with me wherever One I go. Word. One word, Kindle. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> well, it's not the of, same. I'm still I know, home. I know. And I have, I have an entire bookshelf, uh, you know, an entire wall of bookshelves right in front of me over here. So I am just yep. as guilty. Um, I did manage to shed a bunch of vinyl a few years ago because that was oh, too much harsh. to carry with me. That's harsh. It, it, it was, it really was, but, but I totally understand. And that's, you know, that's part of the idea of being able to move as many times as you want to, you know, and um, at the same time, it's really, it, it comes down to being open to whatever change is going to come your way. And I think that's, um, that's probably a legacy that we leave, you know? It's, uh, I was just talking with somebody at lunch today about how it's just a matter of not being fearful of taking that next step. I'm just literally not scared to, you know, start over somewhere else. I'm just not, I've done it so many times. I always land on my feet. I always meet interesting people. I always, you know, make friends. I, I'm very easy to make friends. So, you know, I have some of those things going for me. I know that's not easy for everybody, but, um, but for me, it's been, you know, part of the, the journey is just like not being afraid of, of kind of taking a chance on yourself and giving yourself a good fighting chance in this world. And who knows where it'll lead. I don't, I can't ever think, wow, this, this career is going to be like where I'm going to retire from. Like, I don't even think I'm going to retire. Like I'll probably do will. something else. Like yeah. <laughs> I never will. You know, I, I, I told somebody the other day, I suck at golf, you know, the ball's too small for the court. So I can't <laughs> imagine just, you know, not doing anything. Right. Yeah. And, but, but, you know, when you talk about being fearless, I think that's a mindset too. You know, yeah. being able to say, you know what, as afraid as I may be of taking this leap, I have always landed on my feet and I will land on my feet again. And having that confidence that no yeah. matter what, things are going to be okay. And 100%. that's something that, you know, um, depending on how you've been raised, I mean, a lot of people are just like afraid of, you know, oh my God, what am I going to do? Am I going to be starving in the street and sleeping in a refrigerator box, whatever it is, you know? And I understand that fear. At the same time, I don't really share it. You know, I mean, we all have our moments, you know, we all have our moments yeah. where we say, oh my God, what have I done? But ultimately, you know, you take the leap and it usually pays off because the risk is worth it. Well, and that's where the skills really come to play. Yeah. 
yeah. because you know that's that's the thing that has kept me from being homeless and living in a refrigerator box like it's because okay this skill's not profitable right now all right i guess i have to go in this direction and and then you know just taking yourself out of the mix saying okay yeah. I, i'm i'm not going to be caught up in how this looks to anybody else i'm not going to be fearful um i'm going to just kind of go with it and see what transpires and if you know sometimes you hit brick walls man you like i've hit a lot of i've had a lot of no's a lot of oh, yeah. doors slammed in my face and, oh yeah yeah you know yeah. And, or and, yeah and as you say like, yeah and as oh. you say colossal failure stories you know we've all got those you know and i have i have screwed up big time you know but <laughs> every single time i've come away with a certain learning experience Yep. Absolutely. It's, I think you have to learn how to get up after you get knocked down. Well, and you know, that's, that really is the gist of it right there because, you know, there's that whole old saying of, uh, it's not what happens to you in life. It's how you react to what happens to you because, yep. you know, you're always going to run into some kind of challenge you know, something is always going to be there. That's not going to be what you expected and learning oh, yeah. to roll with that, you know? Absolutely. I mean, just get in a car and drive anywhere and like, you're going to have an unexpected journey. It's not going to be direct one point A to point B, yep. but I'm not going to waste my stress hormones on any of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a train that's going by for 10 minutes. That sucks. <laughs> it but sucks. Let me check my email, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like you mm -hmm. kind of have to roll with things. And I think, um, you know, if I were to sell any, any, you know, the future generation to, to, to like kind of, you know, just remain flexible and to keep getting up, you know, I, I can't tell you. I mean, the only other brutal uh, industry has been, you know, performing industry where you get literally like, you know, there's, there's so many... I'm so good at rejections. I'm fantastic <laughs> at it. Like, you know, you, you have to get used to 99% of the time, it's going to be a no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And but especially if you're doing anything like, you know, getting up on stage or pitching a song as a songwriter yeah. or pitching a track. I mean, anything like that. Yeah, you're going to get turned down more often than not. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is going in. Everyone hopes that it's not going to be them, right? But it's going to be them. Like at some point, everybody, every, the people I know, my friends that I know that are on Broadway, who are making it as actors or singers, they have had more rejections than ever the success that they've had. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what gets you to that point where you are successful. Yeah. And if you, if you are, you know, I mean, I, I know people who have been successful right at the outset. And then when they do fail... Oh, is it a train wreck? Oh my gosh. I feel awful for celebrities. I, I know this sounds weird, but I feel awful for them who had these amazing rises to fame and then they just crash. You're right. And then, then they don't, they don't know how to crash. They don't know how to crash. Yeah. They don't know how to crash yeah. land. Yeah. And you know, uh, and true. then, and then forever chasing that, that rise again, that may or may not happen and that's got to be a really tough thing to peak so early i feel like i'm just going to continue to strive until i'm not able to oh yeah anymore. yeah oh i i agree with you 100 percent. absolutely yeah well jill courtney thank you for being my guest thank you for having me it's been quite a pleasure yes you thank you for being so like-minded and appreciating um the sparkle I bring to this table, because I tell you what, not everybody's like this. So I appreciate being appreciated. Oh, absolutely. Sparkle are us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Daniel Keller. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join us each week for Insights and Sound.